Thank you very much for the invitation to come to the Cato Institute. Um, I probably most closely align with the libertarian way of thinking, so I find myself in the uncomfortable position of trying to defend Roosevelt today to try to have some diversity, if you will, in the, uh, in the panelists today. And in trying to think about what to say and defend Roosevelt, been sweating worse than Ryan Seacrest watching Brokeback Mountain. <laughs> Thank you, that was a good joke. I'm glad you finally laughed. <laughs> in doing so, then, in thinking about the New Deal, I want to try to think as Roosevelt did 76 years ago without the benefit of hindsight that we currently have. When Roosevelt took office, he was facing a 30% deflation, a 55% decrease in industrial output, and remembering that since the United States produced half of world industrial output, the United States alone represented a 25% decrease in world industrial output. Half of all the financial institutions that existed in 1929 were vaporized by March of 1933. The money supply had fallen by a third, as Milton Friedman so poignantly pointed out. And he was looking at a 25% unemployment rate. So Roosevelt's first term was nothing but a grand experimenter. He wanted to try to do something different because he needed to. To be clear, one needs to divide the New Deal and Roosevelt's actions into two parts. One was provided direct relief. And the other one involved planning and the control of markets. Direct relief was provided to hungry, desperate people who looked to our government with sunken eyes and an empty belly with their hand out and saying, help us. In this instance, the New Deal was demanded by the public and was necessary, appropriate, and correct. I've come some distance in my thinking on this over the years, but when people are desperate, Paying them to dig holes and fill them back up again does make a lot of sense to me. Moreover, let us remember that the New Deal gave us the amortized mortgage. Prior to the New Deal changes, you had to have 50% down on a house, and the maximum amortization period for a home was five years. The government changed that. You could stretch it out to 20 years or more. Moreover, Roosevelt jettisoned the gold standard when he took office, which in my view was the single greatest act that could have been done to promote recovery, reflate the economy, and free us from the downward spin cycle we were in with the deflationary vortex that basically took the entire world into the Great Depression. Now, other people disagree with that. I don't. When Roosevelt took office in March of 1933, he wasn't sure he was going to leave the gold standard. It wasn't until the World Economic Conference that they went there and he said, well, maybe I will. Professor George Warren from Cornell University was encouraging him to increase the, the, the price of gold up to $35 an ounce, which they ultimately did. But when Roosevelt started to talk about maybe going back on the gold standard, the stock market fell that very same day and he said, oh, the hell with this. So he made the right executive decision and dropped the hammer on it and he deserves a lot of credit for that. 